Okay. Hello, hello, everybody. Hope you're having a good day so far. Give me just a second so I can get this pulled up on my computer and I can see what you guys are into. Uh, hello from Sue Ellen from Harmony, Florida. My mom is already on. Hello from uh, Devin in Plattsburgh, New York, uh, from Virginia, Alberta, Canada. Thank you so, so much for watching. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. <clears throat> We're gonna give a couple more people just a little while to jump on. And then we're going to get started because I have a fun project lined up for you today. Hello from uh, Australia, um, Houghton Lake, Michigan. Hope I did not totally botch that. Ottawa, Kansas, Canada, not Kansas, uh, Wisconsin, Missouri, Arizona, Oklahoma. Okay, it's going so fast. All right, so thank you everybody for jumping on. Um... Today, I have a lot of kind of info to throw at you really quickly. Um, where did I do with all my papers? Okay, here they are. So, for those of you who have been so awesome for joining me on these Beat Therapy Lives, you will know that on Monday, I did a video about the little helper pins here. Um, yeah, it was Monday. The helper pins were Monday. Uh, so this was the plain pin. Um, the one I did in the video was the little red line for our firefighters. Um, I had one for nurses. I did a um, flag one. There was a lot of different ones, but I wanted to let you know, I've had some people really step up um, the last day and send me some patterns that they've done. Um, <laughs> hey to everybody jumping in. They're going so fast on the screen. I can hardly see it. Um, okay. So, um, first thing, if you went on Monday, yesterday, or even early this morning, um, the same patterns were on there. I went in today and I actually uploaded a quite a few more patterns. So I want to show you what I uploaded. So if you have already downloaded from my website, all you have to do is go back to my website, which is off the beaded path, um, When you log into the website, it's going to immediately bring you to the orders to download. And then it will bring up that download link again, and you will be able to see all that I added today. So today I added a blank heart. So that way, for those of you who want to design your own heart, but don't necessarily have a computer program to do it, this is a blank one. The blue outline are the last beads um, along the edges. So that way you will have an outline to kind of go by. Okay. So this is a blank one. Uh, Kathy Hobbs Stones uh, sent me, I think it is four different ones that are rainbow. So let me here is uh, one of the rainbows, another rainbow that she sent, a different rainbow, and one last rainbow. She, she sent me those four rainbows. Now, the next one I want to show you was, and he did one for pharmacists for the RX. And so they were uh, nice enough to share all of these for free um, so that I could share all of these for free with you. So um, if you go back to the website, you can see all of these are ready to be downloaded and good to go. So thank you to Wayne Wiley and thank you to Kathy Hobbs Stones um, for sending these to me and contributing to our um, helper pins. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, uh, I had someone also email me and they said um, that somewhere, I, and, and because at this point I've answered 5,000 emails and I have no clue, but somewhere I've got hashtag helpers pins with an S 2020 and then somewhere else it's helper pin 2020 without the S. Okay, if you can hashtag it either way, okay, because then you can just search either one of those and, um, you know, you'll be able to see all that anybody has placed under those two. And they were like, can you go back and can you fix this on blah, 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 blah. No, 
to be honest with you, I, I ain't got time for that right now. <laughs> I'm trying to homeschool. I'm trying to do these videos. You guys are awesome and you are making them and you are posting them and you are giving them away. And honestly, that's all that matters, that these are getting into the hands of the helpers and the people who um, really deserve these hearts. So, um, so yes. Okay. Um, so let's get started today. I've got a really fun project and originally I thought, okay, what can I do that's not a piece of jewelry? Because if you're like me, your house is starting to overflow with jewelry that you're making um, just because we are all, you know, sitting at home right now. So I thought... What if I showed you guys how to make a fun little bookmark charm? Um, just something really, really simple. And so it's a brick stitch. And I'm going to take this off here so I can show you. Um, it's a little brick stitch flower. I mean, how cute and how aprily can this get? A little brick stitch flower here. And then I've just slid the flower onto a paper clip. So, super, super easy. Um, if you wanted to, you could even make these hearts and add a paper clip or add a little ring to the top and put it onto a paper clip. Something totally different. And these will make fantastic um, little things that you can give as gifts or whatever. And so, I've got mine. Hold my place in my book I'm reading right now. It's set of three. Jenny, I promise if you're watching this, I promise you I'm going to get it finished so I can send, give it to you. So, yeah, there we go. So, that's what we're doing today. All right. So, um, okay, I was looking at, at all the little things there. Yes, my mom just said, um, great idea for a planner as well. So if you are a planner, I mean, it's not like we can plan too much right now, but if you have a planner, these will be awesome in a planner and um, earrings, whatever. It's, it's fun. Now I will show you tomorrow. I don't know if I'll get it done or not because I have some other projects I'm working on too, but I've come up with an earring that I, I like bigger earrings. I mean, obviously true. I like much bigger stuff, so I've come up with a fun earring that you can use on this as well. So, of course, the pattern is already on my website for free at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. Two colors of a size 11 Delica. You can use a regular size 11 seed bead, um, but the only thing with uh, size 11 seed beads, it may turn out a little wonky. Um... Color A is going to be the outline of the flower um, that you're going to need 66 beads. Color B is going to be the, the fill-in of the flower, and you need 79 of those. So, it's, not, it's a good way to use a stash buster. Uh, somebody said um, men might prefer those to pins. Yes, absolutely. Uh, could work as a purse charm. Yes. Um... So, yes, lots of lots of good ones. So, pattern, again, for free, off the beaded path, beadstore.com. Click under step-by-step -step tutorials, and there is a whole little section there for free. Um, it's got everything that I've done the last two weeks in bead therapy. Um, all of those are completely free. Okay, um, is what I'm wearing a pattern? Yes, this and... Hopefully, I see where Sammy is on here, so hopefully Sammy can find the video. Um, I think this was called the Carved in Stone. It's actually supposed to be a pendant, but I made them into earrings. So, yes, I do have a video and a step-by-step -step pattern for those on my website. And the bracelets I have on are bead crochet. And uh, I've had a lot of people emailing me asking. Um, the crochet hooks, the ones that I am preferring to use now and letting my students use are tulip crochet hooks. Um, and we do have those in stock right now. So if you want to try bead crochet, um, the bobbins, the hooks, everything is there that you need. I've been getting a lot of questions about when we're going to restock certain kits. And honestly, right now it is a matter of there are literally very, very few of us. Um, we are not a necessary business, essential business. So we are literally only shipping right now, which means that we, you know, can't restock kits and all of that kind of stuff at the moment. Um, but I promise you guys, as soon as I get employees back and all that good stuff, we will have kits. 
Now, on the back side of your pattern is your graph and your word charts. Um, the word charts, I don't follow at all. I just kind of follow my picture. And again, um, like I said, from Monday's video, if you can't print out a whole lot of stuff or um, doesn't want to use up a lot of ink, you can go ahead and you can uh, put this in a clear sleeve and use a dry erase marker and dry erase your rows as you do with them. Um, and somebody just said, um, would it be possible to demo Kumahimo? Um, so lady in Florida, and that is her name on here, not a, a name I just made up, lady in Florida. Um, if you go to Facebook and you look up the group Seed Beads and More, I believe it is, they are doing a whole bead along with Kumahimo right now. And it's really, really, really good instruction. So you may want to check them out while doing that. Um, I use the word charts. Awesome. Um, you know, everybody's going to be different, whatever you want to do. No worries. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to move the camera around. So if you get motion sickness, make sure to turn your head, um, for just a minute here while I get the camera in place. Okay. And let's hope that this thing will stay the way it needs to today. It's being a little slippery today. Okay. Well, hey, Ladina. I see you on here. My Aunt Dar is on here right now. Okay. Come on with me here. All right, everybody. Hang on one second. I knew this was going to happen. Everybody just hang out with me for just a minute. I'm sorry. Close your eyes. Ugh. Man. There we go. Okay, we're working on it. Ha ha, maybe. Sorry guys, everybody bear with me here. I'm having to get, get this thing put back into place so it won't move. Yay, okay. Woohoo, we have lift off. Okay. Hey, Sandy Sanders from Charleston, South Carolina. Okay. Um, Miss Elizabeth says, if you can't print, one thing I do for brick stick charts is to take a screenshot of it and open it in the notes app on my phone. In the app, you can add lines, doodles, and cross rows off. Very, very, very good uh, tip there, Miss Elizabeth. So, you can see my two colors here. And let me get everything in order here now that it's been a hot mess. Um, for the project today, I'm using 1G. You can use pretty much any type of thread you would like, but I personally just like to use the 1G for this. Um, let me get a little bookmark holder so I don't lose my spot in my book here. All right, so there's our little flower. And this little flower is not an original design. There are tons of these little flowers floating around on Facebook uh, and on Pinterest and on um, all sorts of different platforms. But I didn't see one that was just a plain old flower like this. So um, that's what we're going to do today. So 1G size 12 beading needle, and I have about a yard and a half of thread. Um, and so on Monday, I showed you where I started at the bottom and I worked my way up. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here in the middle this time and show you how you can work up and work down. Okay. Gay Schooner says, I have no sound. Um, somebody type to Gay and tell her to make sure that her sound is turned all the way up and that um, her little... Like when you click on the screen, if the sound box is an X, it's muted. So she needs to take care of that as well. Um, okay, so I'm going to start this row because I want to show you, like I said, on Monday, I showed you how to start at the bottom and work your way up. Um, now I want to show you how to start in the middle. So the middle, we are actually going to ladder stitch this row here in the middle. 
So I'm going to pick up two of my A's. And today I'm using, um, let's see, show you this real quick. Um, today I'm using, for this green, it is DB656, which is opaque green. And this green is DB262, which is opaque luster something or another. <laughs> okay, so two beads, two of my A's. My, don't mind the marker on my hand. Me and Grayson colored Easter eggs today um, during school time. All right, so I'm going to go back through the first bead threaded on. I'm going to come back through. And you want your beads to sit side by side, just like this. I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to come down through that the second bead again so the one here working to the right I'm gonna pull this through now this first stitch um, you can reinforce if you want to again completely up to you um, so that's my first two beads so now I've got to add three more of these A's here so I'm gonna pick up one A my thread is coming out of the bottom of this bead so I'm just gonna come right back down through that same bead so that it makes a circle <laughs> yeah miss Elizabeth uh, opaque luster something something that is my favorite finish as well <laughs> oh. okay hey at least I had the DB number right so that's three so pick up another A. My thread is coming out of the top of this A, so I'm gonna come right back up through that same bead again. And then come down through the bead that I just added. So this whole row is a ladder stitch. So, so far, oh, just popped up. Dolly Parton announces $1 million donation for coronavirus relief. Well, that's awesome. I love me some Dolly Parton. And just by the way, uh, Dolly is starting tomorrow on her YouTube channel to read um, bedtime stories. I cannot wait. She's going to be reading books from her imagination library. Okay, so now I have to add one more A. Um, why are you using 1G instead of Fireline? I use it or a more floppy piece. Um, and honestly, uh, Lorita, the reason that I am using 1G is because I am a very, very tight stitcher. Um, I have been beading almost 20 years. <clears throat> I personally do not like Caroline. I don't like to bead with it. I use 1G or DuraThread for almost everything. Um, you use what you want to use and what you are comfortable with using. Okay. So now you can see I have a bead here. So I'm going to pick up one B. My thread is coming out of the top of this bead, so I'm going to come right back up through it again. And I mean, like I said at the beginning of the video, you can use any kind of thread you want. Whatever kind of thread you want, because I promise you, if you could sit here and you could fill my my flower versus one with fire line, it will um, be just as tight and is stiff. Okay, so I need one, two, three, four, five more of the A's. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay those out. Three, four, five. So that way I'm gonna finish up this row real quickly. And it's just ladder stitch, guys. That's all we're doing for this first row. Now, if you want to, you can leave enough tail thread to do the whole bottom part of your flower. Me, personally, I don't like to leave lots of tail thread because if I leave a lot of tail thread, um, I spend more time fighting that tail than I do actually beating. Uh, yes, somebody said 1G comes in a lot of colors. Yes, it does. LaDonna, is there a video on ladder stitch? Yes, I currently have over 500 videos. Um, so, yes. Um, and Fireline. Um, Fireline is a thermally bonded stringy material that is um, comes in different weights or pounds, I guess I should say. Um, Fireline is 
a 100% nylon thread and it has just a, a tiny bit of stretch in it. Um, not too much, but just a tiny bit. Um, I suggest, and it's kind of one of those things you're going to use what you, uh, people like best what they learn on and what they're used to. So I just suggest everybody try something and don't try it um, for one project and say, I hate it. You have to try a couple of different stitch, a couple of different projects with it because everything has its thing that it's good to be used for. Okay, so I'm gonna work up now. And um, one thing that you can do is you can go back through and you can reinforce this row. So if your row isn't pretty and straight like mine, and again, um, I have been beating for a long time. So if your row is not pretty and straight like mine, you can go through and you can go back up, down, up, down, up, down to pull everything together and make it look really, really well and really tight like mine. <clears throat> so the next row here, is this row here, and it's gonna be increasing brick stitch. So I'm gonna be working, for those of you who watched Monday, increasing brick stitch is the, I'm gonna pick up these first two beads to start with. So when I tip my beadwork up like this, you can see that all my little bead holes here and you can see there is a little line of thread between each bead. That is called our um, thread bridges, and that is what we are going to be going under um, to make our little stitches. Okay, what is the wax that you use for your thread in the blue thing? Okay, so this is Thread Magic. You do not have to wax 1G. I just like to wax it when I'm doing a brick stitch project. Um, where do I find the chart again? Somebody please tell her where to find that chart. Okay, <clears throat> so I am going to come up under the very first thread bridge right here. I'm going to pull this thread and then I'm going to come up through the bead right above where my thread is exiting. And when I pull this, I'm going to pull this thread, put it in my fingers and pull it straight up. Okay. And this is what it's going to look like. It's okay if these first two beads or kind of separate that, it's completely okay because we can go back and fix that if that happens. So that is the first two beads of my row here. So now I'm gonna add one, two, three more bees. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and lay those out so I don't have to sit here and count them. So with our regular brick stitch, we pick up a bead, we go under the thread bridge. So we're not going under through a bead. We're going under the thread bridge. Pull the thread and then go up through the bead that we just added. And I'm gonna pull this through. Okay. Pick up one bead, go under that next thread bridge there. Pull it through and go up through the bead you just added. Thank you for those of you who are answering some of these questions that um, since I've got my hands busy, it's kind of. Okay, Pat is asking, are the first two bead therapy videos from Facebook also available on YouTube? They are not currently, Pat. We are, um, Right now, honestly, I'm trying to work on these bead therapy videos um, each day. So it's kind of hard for me to go back and get those downloaded and uploaded. We will eventually get those first two videos for bead therapy on there. But right now, um, we just don't have the extra manpower to do that. But you can find the patterns for free on my website. Okay, so now I've got two A's. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull them those A's out and lay them down there. And again, we're just gonna start our brick stitch. So we pick up one, go under that thread bridge there. 
And for those of you who are just jumping in, we are making a little beaded flower charm um, that you can put onto a little bookmark or like I am just simply putting mine on a paper clip here um, to save my place in my book. Okay, so this is what we've got so far. And now basically it's just gonna be a repeat of that. So we can mark these two off and then we'll have one, two, three, four Bs. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay these out. One, two, three, four, and then one A. So I'm gonna quickly go through. And add these beads. Uh, yes, uh, somebody says they can also see using ribbon instead of a paper clip. Absolutely. Are all your videos still available to watch on your site? Um, the videos here on YouTube, we never take down. They are always there. Um, the videos on in our Facebook group, again, they are always there. We don't take anything down. So... All the videos are there, and if you need to know how to find certain videos, I showed that in yesterday's live therapy. Okay, so you can see I have one more bead I need to add here, but I have no more thread bridges to add them. So I have to, since I'm doing an increase, let me get a hold of it here, I have to go under the same thread bridge that I just went under with that green bead gonna pull this and then I'll go up through the green bead that I just added okay so that was my first little increase row so now I can take that row off done with that row completely okay so I've got one more increase row here and then you'll see that it starts to go in. And these are going to be decrease rows. So these three rows will be decreases. So this is an increase and then a decrease, a decrease, and a decrease. So to do and I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and lay my beads out. So I've got an A, one, two, three, four B, an A, a B. A, 4B, and an A. Okay, and this will help you too. If you don't want to refer back to your graph or your chart, this will help you as well just to be able to uh, have everything down and not have to kind of keep looking at your charts. So I've got my first two beads. Since we're working that increase, I'm going to come under that first thread right there. And then I'm gonna go up through the bead. Okay. So Bethany says one can order actual brass paper clips very reasonably um, from eBay. If you have to wait, a, you have to wait a while, but they're very nice to have for things like this. Yes, um, you can order very nicer paper clips. It's just the fact I'm trying to do videos right now of things that you guys already have in your homes. Um, so that way you don't have to go out and buy anything extra if you have the beads on hand. Um, I know that during times right now we're all kind of strapped for cash. Um, a lot of us are out of work so just trying to do that. And also uh, I've noticed too that a lot of things that I'm placing or for online, um, they're showing like weeks and weeks to get to us now. So ugh. this too shall pass. And again, all I'm doing is just picking up the one bead going under the very next thread breach, 
Um, Nancy says, Are th is this bead a size 11? Yes, Nancy, this is a size 11 Delica bead. You can use regular size 11s. If you want the charm to be bigger, you can use a size 8 seed bead. Um, completely up to you. They do make a size 8 Delica. It will probably double the size of the finished charm. So here's the size of the finished charm. Um, and I'll kind of put like, okay, so like there's a lipstick tube, so you can kind of see the size of it. Um, but like I said, if you use a size eight, it will probably double the size of the finished piece there. Now I'm trying to hurry up and get this row done because I want to show you the decrease row. So you, so you can see what the increase is and then what a decrease is. And again, for those of you who could possibly just be jumping on, at the beginning of this live stream, I showed some new patterns that um, people have generously gave um, to be uploaded into onto our website for the hearts, the helper hearts or the helper pins. Um, so if you missed that, there are about five new patterns that I listed this morning for those. Okay, so now that row is complete. That's an increase row. So now I can basically take and I can mark that whole row off because it's done. So the next row, you can see it goes in. So I'm still gonna pick up two beads. So this one and this one. And, but this time when I get to the end, I'm not gonna add an extra bead. So you'll see here in just a second, and I'm gonna go ahead again, I'm gonna lay out my row. So it's an A. The good thing about your rows is um, each row is pretty much the same as far as what you'll pick up down throughout the row. Uh, it's a mirror image of each other, so um, it's kind of easy to lay out your beads there for them. Okay. So I've got my beads laid out for my row. I'm going to pick up my first two beads again. And I'm going to skip the first thread bridge and go under that second thread bridge there. Now you'll see that these two beads kind of sit funny. So we have to go up through the bead right above where the thread's coming out there. Then we have to come down through the first bead and up through that second bead one more time so that it will pull these two beads and make them lay the way you want them. So pull the thread straight up and you'll see it straightens up those two beads and makes them look really, really well. So now it's just a thing of picking up one bead, going under the next thread bridge there. and then going up through the bead that you just added. Okay, and again, I'm gonna try to work this row um, all the way down so you can see really quickly. Now see, that's the part right there. If you get them mixed up, then that's the part that throws you off, 3A, okay. Uh, I did see some of you asking earlier. Um, homeschool went a little better today, but not a whole lot better. So, oh, I'm telling you, this this homeschool thing. Whew. 
I am so, so thankful for teachers. Um, we have to go Friday and pick up more work for Grayson from his school. So um, I'm going to take his teacher, one of the teacher pens. And somebody asked about, um, maybe it was yesterday, somebody said, hey, can you make a graph for the teacher pen? Uh, already have it. It's online. It was uh, or one of the original ones that I had done. So if you're looking for the teacher pen, it is on my website for free under the free section with the helper pins. Okay, so I'm to the end. I only have one last bead to add. And on this one, I just add my bead as normal. There's nothing um, that I have to do special for the end of that row. I don't have to add anything extra because it's good to go. Uh, Bethany, yes, they gave us like a lesson plan that we had to follow. And then they added, uh, this week they added music, art, and computer class as well. Oh, okay. So you just continue to work your decreases um, until you get up to here. Now, when you get up to here, you need to be coming out of this bead right here to do your decrease. So you would basically, if you're coming out here, you come down and up and then do a decrease row and that's how you do this top part up here. So I'm gonna work really quickly. I'm gonna try to work these, these last two rows up real quickly, just so that I can show you. I did not get a chance this morning to, um, to make another sample, and I apologize for that, but um, I wanna show you how to do that little decrease really quickly, and then I'll show you how to finish it, because it's super, super easy. Don't let brick stitch, if you're new to brick stitch, don't let it intimidate you. Um, it's, you know, once you get the hang of it, it's really simple. And a lot of people really, really like doing, starting at the widest row and working upward and then downward. Remember, I'm doing the decrease row, so I'm skipping the first thread bridge and going under that second thread bridge. Um... Yes, Bethany, the teacher actually sends out music that she wants the kids to listen to um, during quote-unquote music class. Um, my little boy is a country music lover. He loves him some country music, so whew, that's been a little daunting to try to get him to listen to the music she wants him to listen to. Um, my niece had a little boy last month, and his name is Grayson. Oh, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Um, let's see. Let me whip through these real quick. Yeah, and um, let's see. Rachel, my little boy's name, uh, his name is Grayson Montana. So, I don't know what your niece's son, his name, middle name is. Okay, the caged bead says, I actually liked it and will be doing more so far. It is the easiest for me to learn. Oh, well, that's really good. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, I personally love some brick stitch. Um, and you guys, I will try to show you at the end of the video, I'll try to write it down so you'll see it, but there is a fantastic website called threadabead.com, threadabead. Um, I think they are over in the UK, and she has a ton of patterns that are brick stitch and peyote stitch, and they are cute, cute little characters. Oh my goodness, I love it. And they actually put on, I seen an email, I think it was this morning or last night, they sent out an email for a little three-dimensional um, person that you can make that looks uh, looks like a nurse. It's amazing. I'll see if I can find it real quick. Okay, Donna Berry says, I like the brick stitch, but I don't like the two-stitch witch's hat. Can't get the hang of it. 
Let's see. Well, Donna, we might have to talk about that in one of the videos to see if we can help you with that. Okay, so you can see here I have my uh, uh, my last like smaller decrease row. And again, I'm going to go ahead and lay those out. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. And one, two, three. This flower is, once you get it going, it's really, really simple as far as the design of it. And so um, you can pretty much whip these out pretty, pretty quickly. And I've seen on some like Pinterest and some other places where they do some really cute, um, like different shading with beads and things like that. And um, it's really, these are really cute like that. Okay. Um, the... Let's see, somebody says, our county schools are sending homework via the internet. Um, our county schools are as well. Our, li our little boy goes to um, another school, and he's in kindergarten, so we are actually going and picking up physical schoolwork from his school because the teachers don't, uh, the kindergarten teacher, is she, and she'll tell you straight up, she is old school. She does not like the digital thing, so she sends home the paperwork. Okay, I'm about done with the row, guys, and then I'll show you how to do this big, big decrease. <laughs> Bethany says, we homeschooled one year. Um, I will be 100% honest with you guys. We had considered homeschooling. We thought it was going to be the way we were going to go, and then um, we changed our minds, and now I appreciate every teacher so much more than I ever would. Um, one of my good friends, um, Sandy, is a teacher at a um, early college, and she is a super amazing, amazing person for what she does. Okay, so now we are to this really, really big decrease here. So we're currently coming out, you, it doesn't matter if you're coming out here, and I'll flip it. It doesn't matter if you're coming out at this speed or at this speed. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to come down through that bead and then up through so that we're coming out of this speed right here. So then we can do decreases to do these rows. <clears throat> I flipped it so that you could see it a little better. So to say that again, so that if you didn't understand it from the paper, um, I'm going to come down through the bead right next to my thread. Oh, Michelle W. is a teacher. You are amazing, Michelle. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you do for our kids. Okay, um, and then I come up through that next bead. So now I'm ready to do my next row, and it's an A, 3B, oh, A, 3Bs, and an A. So again, we're going to pick up those two beads, go under the second thread from where I'm coming out, go up, down, and back up through that bead again. Okay, and then I'm just going to continue this short row. This is a really, really short row. We're going to finish it. Oh, Bethany says that she um, obtained her teacher's license, and so I sub her high school English class. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Bethany. That's amazing as well. Thank you for loving our high schoolers enough to do that. Oh. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> you can see there was my short row that I just did. Now the next row is a decrease row as well. And it is four A's. So I'm just going to pull my A's out here. I'm going to pick up two. From where my thread is coming out, I'm going to um, skip one thread bridge and go under the next thread bridge. 
Uh, Nancy says, I just bought some beads from your store. Thank you so much, Nancy. I really appreciate you um, purchasing from my store. Um, somebody says, uh, Rosario from California, I'm a nurse. I did a heart. Thank you for what you're doing. No, thank you. You are the hero. You are a hero. Thank you. And uh, last seven, six, five, four says, I have homeschooled our son um, since he was kindergarten. Now he is in third grade. It takes lots and lots of patience. Amen, sister. You're one of my heroes. Um, Neela, yes. Um, you start the row with two beads, whether you're increasing or you are decreasing. Okay, so you can see right there. This is the whole top part of the heart complete. Now, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make my little loop here. Um, let's see, two, four, six. So my loop has six beads. So from where I am coming out, I'm gonna pick up six of these green beads. And then I'm just going to come across and come down through that bead so that way my loop is ready so that I can attach a to my book. And again, there are prettier paper clips and all that kind of stuff that you can use. Um, there are even, um, we sell some actual um, bookmark type things that you can use. But like I said, I'm just trying to show you for something that you guys would have on hand. Okay, and I'm just stitching up through these beads again because I wanna just reinforce that loop again. Um, if you get to the end of your project and you have a good bit of thread left over, then it's nice to stitch up and reinforce that as well. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to come to stitch down through the beads to come out of either this end or this end of the flower. And it's kind of one of those things, it doesn't matter how you get there as long as you get there and you don't see the thread. Okay, um, going diagonally through beads helps a lot because you will not see that thread as you are stitching to get to the beads. Okay, so my thread is coming out here. What I can do on this side is I can go ahead and thread my needle. And I think tomorrow I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about needles. Um, I have an awesome project to show you, but I wanna talk to you about needles a little bit and the sizing of needles. Um, so that way it'll help some of you who are having questions about that. Okay. And I'm just getting rid of this thread here. I love those kids. The more difficult, the better. Bethany says they just need some Waffle House time. Amen to that. Whew. Oh, sorry, guys. Didn't mean to do that. I was throwing my extra thread away. Okay. So now I have my bottom part of my little flower done, and it's given me something that I can hold on to. And so now all I'm going to do is I would flip my pattern. And I would work an increase, an increase, and then my decrease rows to get to there until I've got this side finished. And then once you do that, then you have your heart. And like I said, you can just attach a jump ring to the top of it and you can make it into a little charm. You can put it on an ear wire and make it into an earring. You can put a jump ring and put it onto um, a necklace. You really can do, did I just say heart? I meant flower. You can do it and make it what into a you want. It's just a really, really simple design. So I'm going to move the camera here for a minute. Okay, Jess says, I just received my package from your shop. Hooray, it's my birthday. Uh, get myself some bead therapy. That's awesome. Okay, all righty. Let's see here. Let me get my light out of the way. Okay, guys. Guys, so I hope that you learned how to make this really simple brick stick flower charm today. Again, you can get the pattern for free on my website, offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. Look under the step-by-step -step tutorial section, and then um, 
look under free. And Jason says, are you going to do the masculine project we talked about this week or next week? Yes, yes, yes. Um, uh, let me see. Jason is one of my new Facebook pals. Um, so I told him I would try to do a masculine project. So Jason, if I don't get to it on Friday, it will be Monday because I've come up with a bracelet for um, I, that I think you guys will really enjoy. Um, it can definitely be made very feminine um, and masculine just depending upon the colors that you're going to use. Um, the thing is, I've got to try and get the sample done for that so you can um, see that because what I want to teach you on that is I want to teach you the pattern, but I also want to show you how to put on a slide bar clasp so you can um, use that as well. Um, let's see. I'm looking at questions here and little things. <laughs> All right, guys. So, um, so that is it for today. I'm going to try to answer a couple of questions tomorrow that people have emailed me. I'm going to answer a couple of quick questions on Friday. Um, I'm going to show you projects for both of those. Um, now, I did want you to know I've decided that next week we're going to do lives every day again. But what we're going to do, we're going to do it a little different. It's not going to be one project every single day. Um, I want us to work on a project all week together. So basically, we're going to do a, a bead embroidery project. Um, I'm going to try to work this in. So on Monday, we will talk about, probably it'll be Monday, we're going to talk about um, all the different things that you can stitch on and how we actually get our design onto what we're going to bead on. Then I'll talk about how to do some cabochons, how to add some rivolis, how to add all these different things so that you can work on a project. Now, here's what I really, really suggest to you over the weekend because I would love for us to all work together on a project and then have like a reveal on Friday of what you've made where it can show us for that. So, um, some suggestions over the weekend. Think about what you want to make. Um, the The way that this kind of got me into thinking about it is, um, let me think. I wanted to make for Easter um, when I was supposed to go to church for Easter. Um, I wanted to have a cross pendant that I'd made to go with what I was going to wear for Easter. Um, unfortunately, that ended up being way bigger than what a cross pendant should be. So I'm actually going to make mine to adhere to my Bible. Um, so that way it, you know, puts two things that I love together. Uh, my friend Sam for some Christmas gifts. So you really can do a whole lot of fun things. Uh, one of my good friends, Vera, she made me a turtle and I don't, oh, where is my turtle? Hang on guys. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. I found it. Okay. So she, I'm, well, what, where did it just go? Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. So she actually beaded me a turtle and she took and found a, um, picture in an adult coloring book and she traced it onto her foundation so that then she did the turtle. And so what she done is she made herself a sea turtle as well and she put it on a purse. So there are a lot of different things. Don't think of, excuse me, bead embroidery as just earrings or big, you know, statement pieces because we really can do some fun things with it. So um, think about what you are going to want to make. Now, as you think about it, go ahead and be looking for clip art on your phone or your computer. You can look for like turtle clip art or, um, you know, you can do, I'll show you on Monday how you can just type an S or an A or whatever you want and make it bigger or smaller to be able to do, you know, um, initials or monograms or whatever. So that's what we're going to do um, next week and be good to go. Okay, somebody says, I'm out of 1G. Uh, yes, I'm out of 1G because a lot of my distributors are out of 1G as well. I am going to place an order. I see where some of them are starting to get it back in. So hopefully I will have 1G um, very soon. 
Now, just so that I can kind of give you guys a heads up um, before Monday, um, if you do not have a product called Bead Beading Foundation, Lacy Stiff Stuff, um, you can bead on felt, you can bead on leather or suede, as long as it's thin, really thin, you can get your needle through. A lot of people like to bead on Pellon or Pellon um, that you can get from like a Hobby Lobby or Michael's or a Joann's, any kind of big craft store sells um, that Pellon or Pellon. And like I have a piece right here that I have actually been beading on as well. So there's a lot of different things that you can um, stitch on. Now, if you are just wanting to practice this um, you can use um, just a piece of fabric whatever you want to use um, if you just kind of want to practice but um, I'm gonna be using uh, some beading foundation I do sell that on my website so if you want to get it before Monday um, you know go ahead and I want just wanted to give you a heads up about that and really you can make any sort of of, um, you can use any sort of bead. We'll talk a lot about that, but I just kind of wanted to give you a heads up. Um, Jess says, I'd love to learn bead embroidery, just terrified and don't know how to get started. That is um, something that we will talk about. Um, Mary Bauer says, Joanne's has stiff felt. Um, Michelle W says she beads So yes, uh, sequins. Yes, you can totally use sequins. You can use anything just about in your bead embroidery. And then I'll talk about two fantastic books that have just come out um, from Jamie Cloud Eakin that you can download on Amazon or you can print out, like actually have a print version sent to you. Either one of those are really great and we'll talk about those. Um, so yeah, so uh, I hope you'll join me back again tomorrow at one o'clock and hopefully when you see me, I won't have a shaved head and go all Brittany 2007 on you. Uh, my hair is driving me crazy and all the salons are closed here for over a month. So I don't know if I'm gonna last a whole nother month. I do have my cosmetology license. So if I totally screw it up, then y'all see me with a whole new hairdo the next couple of days. <laughs> so thanks for watching. Uh, like I said, the hearts, uh, if you missed it at the beginning, I uploaded some new heart videos, heart patterns. They are on the website now as we speak. Guys, thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join me again tomorrow at 1 p.m. for our next bead therapy. And remember, we're going to get through this, guys. We are going to get through it. Bye.